My presentation will focus on Millennium Development Goal number two, which is the achievement of universal primary education. And that goal has just one target. Unlike many of the other goals, which have several targets and many, many indicators, this goal has one target and three indicators. The target is to ensure that by 2015, children everywhere, boys and girls alike, will be able to complete a full course of primary schooling. The indicators that the UN claims to use to measure progress um, are threefold. The first is the net enrolment ratio in primary education. The second is the proportion of pupils starting grade one who reach rather than complete the last grade of primary. And the third one is the literacy rate of 15 to 24 year olds, women and men. The good news, the headline news, is that the net enrolment ratio in primary education has increased from 80% in 1991 to 83% in 2000 to 88% in 2006. That's the figure for all developing countries. Now, these graphs were used in, a, in, in classes on educational planning in the 1930s. And I'll explain what the graph um, is. You see the years on the x-axis from 1911 through to 1937. And the enrolment of pupils in government schools and aided schools, um, and the enrolment is the y-axis, ranging from 0 to 50,000. Um, and it was calculated, I don't know quite how, but the record suggested that the present school age population was 740,000. And if you look at the numbers of children who were in school in 1911, in the school age population, uh, there were less than 20,000 children. Uh, by 1930, 1931, the figures were a little over 40,000. When you draw a trend line over what had been happening in school enrollment between 1911 and 1930, 1933 probably is where the points uh, finish, but if you draw um, a linear trend line, uh, then, and project forwards, then um, you will, uh, what, what the line suggests is that in order to reach the 740,000 children that there were, I presume, in 1934, um, it would take 600 years uh, for educational provision to reach out to reach all of those children. Now, fortunately, as you will have seen from the headline figures of 88% in 2006, um, things have moved forward a little faster than were predicted to happen uh, in the 1930s. Things change, and things can change very rapidly. Governments change, politics change, social demand for education changes. In sub-Saharan Africa, at the bottom, uh, the greatest progress has been made from just over 50% net, net primary enrollment ratios in 1991, uh, up, up to 70% in 2005. I just want to highlight three or four challenges that we face within the education sector in meeting the, the, uh, the, the MDG Goal 2. Um, the first is that we're faced with um, a major problem of teacher shortages. Um, countries find it, or some countries find it relatively easy to proclaim uh, free compulsory primary education and to somehow accommodate incredibly large numbers of children who come into schools. But what has often not been planned for is the necessary growth in teacher supply. The supply of teachers has not kept pace with enrolment growth. Pupil-teacher ratios can average over 100 to 1 in some countries. The Global Monitoring Report, which has come out from UNESCO uh, earlier this year, estimated that as many as 18 million new primary teachers will be needed by 2015. I feel that MDG2 is actually of rather limited vision, and the reason is the following. That the net enrolment ratio in primary education focuses on enrolment, but there's an enormous gap between enrolment and learning. Now, Ban Ki-moon goes on in the Millennium Development Report um, in, t in claiming that some of these gains cannot be undone. Um, he's already made his point about primary education. Uh, but he then makes a point about um, vaccinations and antiretroviral therapy for AIDS. Many individuals are alive today thanks to a measles vaccine or antiretroviral therapy for AIDS. And my question is, 
is education a vaccine? I would suggest that some gains in primary education can be undone. Knowledge and skills do not last forever. If they are not used in the household, in the community, in the workplace, they atrophy at quite an alarming rate. Secondly, I would suggest that provided that it is not lost or stolen, the primary education certificate that the child possesses will endure. But its value as a passport out of poverty and into decent work may well decline if more children gain access to secondary education and if, econ and if economies do not expand fast enough to absorb the numbers of educated school leavers. In this circumstance, the qualification goalposts for access to work will shift. And picking up the theme of the conference, there may not only be no goal at half time, but by the time the fullbacks, midfielders, and the strikers get their act together, the very goalposts at which the ball is targeted may have shifted. This focus on MDG2 overlooks, first of all, the need for skilled workers in education. If you're p putting most of your investment on primary education, but you're forgetting that you actually need to train your teachers and you need to produce much larger numbers of teachers, and to do that you have to invest in secondary education and tertiary education, um, in a sense you're shooting yourself in the foot. But clearly I think this point about policy myopia focused on primary education at the expense of secondary and tertiary has implications for all the other sectors represented in this room. The need for skilled workers in health, in agriculture, in environmental management and in development management more generally, all of whom are required to implement the activities to reach all of the MDGs, to say nothing of the skills that are needed for general economic growth as distinct from the skills needed for the specific poverty reduction strategies which the Millennium Development Goals are focused on. I also think that we need to keep on underlining the interrelations between all of the Millennium Development Goals.